Today what I'm going to do is I will do like a brief, very basic general introduction on general mechanisms or principles of telomere function and regulation. Uh, then I will uh, go into the discovery of a non-coding RNA from telomeres, which is called Terra. And then at the end I will just present one of our projects that we have initiated also, which got funded, which was funded by the, uh, by the IRC startup grant. So this data will be very uh, preliminary, of course. And, well, but I invite you to, to discuss this data with me. So, so if you want to ask whatever kind of questions, please do it. It's also helpful for, for, for me. Yeah. So I just want to start off with a very uh, principal image on, 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 the, on the chromosome organization between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And you are all aware of this, that bacteria have a circular chromosome uh, and the genomic information is very little. Whereas uh, during ev evolution to humans, uh, the amount of information uh, was increased uh, dramatically. And this re uh, required a better organization of, 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 of the genetic material. That's why uh, vertebrates have uh, separated the gen uh, genetic uh, information into several chromosomes. And this, on the other hand, is also uh, causing a, a problem because these linear DNA molecules would also represent a DNA uh, damage signal, would basically reflect the DNA damage. No? And that's why you have, and <coughs> this DNA damage would then cause like a degradation cell cycle arrest. And therefore, uh, these uh, higher uh, organisms have developed a, a, a mechanism to protect these chromosome ends. And uh, so the first indication, so the, the first evidence about such a protective mechanism uh, came from uh, very classic uh, geneticists like uh, Mala and Barbara McClintock. And these guys were performing uh, irradiation experiments uh, to break up chromosomes. And what they found is that basically when you break up chromosomes, these chromosomes can uh, fuse again. However, the only uh, piece of, of, of chromosomes which is never involved in the fusion are these are, are chromosome ends. So, and that's why these uh, two scientists independently uh, making a statement that basically uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the end of chromosomes must contain a, a particular information which protects these uh, chromosome ends from fusions. And that's why also, that was also the way how, this, uh, how the name of telomeres were generated. So basically consists of two parts, telos, which means the end, and meros, uh, which means a part. So basically it's the part uh, that is located at chromosome ends. And interestingly, Marla was also stating that this information, that he, he was calling this information uh, the so-called end gene. And it's interesting because now, recently we have discovered that also this kind of end gene is transcribed into a non-coding RNA. So basically in the 80s then, uh, people were then able to, to sequence the genome and then also the chromosome ends were sequenced and it was found that basically in a, var a variety of species, uh, chromosome ends consist of very short tandem repeats which are very similar sequence. And the sequence which is maybe most famous is like, uh, the telomere sequence which is most famous is the ones of vertebrates which is uh, TTHEGG. The, t the length of these uh, repeats can uh, vary dramatically. So in humans, these, uh, we have an average length of, of 10 kb, whereas in the mouse we have uh, telomere length about 40 kbs. And then uh, more later then also DNA fish was then employed to really localize these uh, repeat structures. And then basically you can see here clearly that these telomeric repeat structures are localized at the end of all uh, uh, vertebrate chromosomes. So this is basically a DNA fish image where you hybridize a fluorescently labeled telomere probe to metaphase uh, chromosomes. So then uh, 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 another push for telomere research was then coming from another famous scientist, uh, James Watson, who was discovering that basically uh, uh, linear DNA molecules have a very uh, big problem during DNA replication. Because when the last prime is, uh, is set at the five prime end uh, to prime the Okazaki fragments, uh, this uh, RNA primer will be degraded but cannot be replaced by DNA. So basically, what is uh, happening is that you uh, basically you end up with a gap, which is then also further uh, elongated, made, made bigger by, uh, by uh, oxidative stress and exonucleases. And uh, during uh, proliferation, this gap is then getting all, uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, this would then, then cause, uh, then it was uh, hypothesized that basically at the end of chromosomes, this would then uh, cause a degradation of telomeres and uh, telomere function. 
which is then uh, deprotecting telomeres as indicated by here, by the recruitment of a DNA, DNA damaging, uh, a marker for DNA damage, which is gamma H2X. And in, importantly, basically this gamma H2X is perfectly co-localizing also with signals from telomeres shown here by these yellow signals, which indicates that indeed the, uh, DNA damage factors are recruited to chromosome ends when telomeres are getting uh, too short. And this uh, mechanism was then also providing the, an explanation for the, another phenomenon that was observed uh, previously, the so-called Hayflick lim uh, hay limit. Uh, so basically, Leonard Hayflick was uh, discovering that when you take uh, primary cells and put them into culture, they would grow exponentially for, uh, 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 basically for, uh, for, uh, a long, uh, for a particular period of time. However, then uh, growth is ceasing and these cells uh, become senescent. And these uh, results were also basically suggesting the existence of a kind of counting mechanism that tracks the number of cell divisions. And basically, the discovery of telomere shortening basically indicates that telomeres, the telomere shortening, telomere shortening provides the basis for this uh, counting mechanism. So telomere shortening is also biologically relevant, not only on the cell level, but also on the entire organism. Because uh, basically when uh, people are taking lymphocytes from aging uh, human populations, uh, it was also demonstrated that uh, telomeres are gradually, gradually getting shorter during organismal aging. And basically, uh, basically the fact that basically telomere shortening and aging are correlated and also the link with, uh, telomere, with telomere deprotection due to uh, telomere shortening provided the model that telomere shortening is a major force for driving organismal aging. So basically all this data together were uh, combined in a kind of telomere hypothesis which uh, is important for aging but then later also for cancer. So basically uh, so this hypothesis proposes that uh, during uh, increasing cell divisions, telomeres are getting critically short. And this is then inducing a DNA damage signal, which is then uh, causing a crisis of the cells and also like, inducing uh, senescence, which is uh, a, 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 a key feature of organismal aging. And in parallel to this uh, DNA damage signal, the proliferation is uh, stopped, so cells do not grow anymore. And this has, of course, an important impact on the on the functionality of, of, of stem cells. Then on the other hand, if you, uh, if you look uh, on the concept of telomere function in cancer, uh, basically the, uh, the induction of DNA damage from these functional telomeres is involving uh, both major tumor suppressor pathways, so the P53 pathway and the RB pathway. And basically both these pathways make them, uh, when these pathways are activated, both these pathways make the cells stop growing and dividing. And this basically gives uh, the cells uh, a, a time window to organize the DNA damage uh, repair. And however, the outcome of this DNA damage repair is, cannot be predicted. So on the one hand, it can be work out perfectly. So basically you heal the chromosome. However, on the other hand, it, it, it can also happen that basically two dysfunctional telomeres fused to each other, and then this is, uh, uh, provides a serious problem to the cells because uh, basically, uh, basically if, you're, if these chromosomes are divided in the, in, the, in the next cell division, so this chromosome will break, and this is causing then a uh, dangerous genomic instability, which was demonstrated to feed into the formation of cancer. So both uh, concepts of telomere functioning, organismal aging and uh, cancer are closely linked to, the, uh, to another uh, enzyme which is highly important for the control of telomeres, which is uh, telomerase. So telomerase is an a, a RNA protein complex which consists of, a, of an RNA component which, co which is called TERC and a protein component uh, which is called TERT. And basically this enzymatic complex has the, the capacity to uh, reunite uh, 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 telomeres. <laughs> basically, this pro uh, complex is able to add back telomeric repeats to chromosome ends. And basically, it was shown that this, the RNA component of telomeres, uh, which is called TERC, has a critical sequence motif, uh, which is called uh, the, the template region. And this template region is used as a template for the reverse transcriptase uh, activity of telomerase to add back uh, DNA to chromosome ends, basically to uh, elongate uh, to, to elongate uh, telomeres. 
However, the function of, of telomerase is uh, uh, critically restricted uh, during embryonic <laughs> development. So basically, once uh, vertebrates are born, telomerase activity is immediately downregulated versus zero. And so this means that basically we all, after birth, we are lacking telomerase activity, which is then uh, consequently driving uh, the progressive telomere shorting that is occurring during organismal aging or when we are getting older. And in parallel, of course, uh, this is affecting also the, the proliferative uh, potential of our cells, in particular of our, of our uh, uh, stem cells. And then if you, if you basically uh, look then uh, during organismal aging uh, into uh, like uh, oncogenic events no, that uh, cause deformation of cancer, it was uh, observed that these uh, immortalization processes are uh, tightly, tightly linked to the re-expression of telomerase activity. And this mechanism is essential because then you can uh, maintain telomerase at sufficient length and you can guarantee uh, the indefinite proliferative potential of cancer cells. And consistent with this, we, uh, basically approximately 90% of, of, of human cancers display an upregulation of telomerase activity uh, and there is only 10% of human cancers choose an alternative mechanism of maintaining telomeres. And this is a uh, recombination based uh, mechanism that involves the sister chromatid exchange between different uh, telomeres at different chromosomes. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> when you say telomerase activity, <coughs> do you mean, uh, I mean activity, enzymatic activity of the telomerase? Exactly. But are you losing uh, the protein uh, component of the complex or the so, so why is not active? So this is uh, the, so basically telomerase activity, the, the, if, or the extent of telomerase activity is always regulated by, by the protein component. So basically there's always a su sufficient amount of non-coding RNA of TERC. However, uh, the expression of TERC is tightly regulated and also the shutdown of telomerase activity during, uh, in, uh, during development is also driven by epigenetic processes. However, then other transcription factors, in particular CMYK, so basically, can then uh, open the promoter and then induce efficient uh, expression of, telom of the protein component, which is then rescuing telomerase activity. So if, if you do a Western blot over there in the, in the, in the lower uh, point, so you don't see protein? You don't see protein, and yes. you don't see RNA? No, you see the, you see you the see RNA, you, you see, see the RNA. No, the RNA is always very nicely expressed. Okay. It's, all, nice it's the protein expressed. component oh, that oh is okay. controlling. Okay. So this is also... Um, a particular mechanism to study the, the mechanism is also interesting for us. So um, the future would also like to, to, to use cell models to basically dissect these processes that cause the downregulation of, of, of TERT. And tell them, uh, basically we would like to use mouse embryonic stem cells, the differentiation of these cells to, to study these processes. So basically, importantly, so basically 90% of human cancers upregulate telomerase activity, 10% choose an alternative mechanisms. And that's why uh, telomerase for years has been a major target in, 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 in looking for, for uh, un kind of universal uh, cancer drugs, like to, to look for inhibitors of telomerase activity. So basically, this is all, so basically this part I want to basically conclude, well, um, finish the <coughs> first part, basically which describes more the, the general function of telomeres. So basically telomeres are repetitive elements that are located at the end of eukaryotic chromosomes and the function of these proteins is to protect chromosomes. At this point, we don't know how they are doing it, but this will be in the next part. So the telomeres protect uh, the chromosome ends from basically from degradation and from exonucleases, and also these activities are important for organismal aging. And uh, a general principle of aging uh, says that basically these telomeres are getting progressively shortening during aging, and this provides a direct link to replicative senescence, aging, and cancer. So basically the central question of uh, several years in, in telomere research is then to identify and to understand factors that mediate telomere function. And the main uh, contribution to this work was done by Tizia de Lange, who is working at the Rockefeller Center, who basically identified all these uh, proteins that localize to telomeres. So this protein uh, complex consists of uh, Basically, the major or the most important proteins, TRF1 and TRF2, which basically bind telomeric repeats and then recruit the, the rest of, 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 of these other uh, protein, uh, proteins that are specifically for the telomeres, which are TIN2, TPP1, and POT1. 
And this entire complex was then named uh, the sheltering complex. Basically, it's protecting uh, chromos uh, chromosome ends. So as I already mentioned, uh, TRF1 and TRF2 are the DNA binding activities. So these are double-stranded DNA binding uh, proteins that basically tether the sheltering complex to telomeres. And then we have POT1, which is a, a single-stranded DNA binding protein, which is localizing to the uh, 3 prime overhang of, of telomeres. And uh, a key function of this protein is to control the excess of telomeres. So basically, uh, POT1 is really important like basically to control the excess of, 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 of telomeres to chromosome ends. And then we have other proteins like TPP1, RAP1, and TN2, which basically uh, have like a, to simplify the role of this protein, it's like to form the entire complex. And sheltering is also then to important like to form a, a, a structure or organization of telomeres into a, a so-called loop structure. And the idea of this structure is that basically the three prime overhang, the three prime overhang is basically <coughs> integrating into the DNA double-stranded part of telomeres, which is then uh, increasing uh, a protective, uh, is increasing the, the protection of chromosome ends. So basically the function, to summarize the function of these proteins is like to, to control telomere length by controlling the excess of telomeres and also by controlling recombination of telomeres. It's forming a T-loop. Uh, and basically the general mechanism is, is to provide genomic stabilities. And uh, the function of these proteins were studied in, in, in several mouse models and basically if you, and basically again the loss of uh, function of these mouse models have a severe phenotype in cancer but also in aging. So also indicating that proteins that are localized at telomeres and control telomere functions are highly relevant for, for cancer and organismal aging. So basically in uh, the lab of uh, where I was doing my postdoc, so we also uh, have demonstrated that the epigenetic regulation of telomeres has an important role in, to, in, the, in the control of telomere length. So basically using uh, several uh, cell lines that uh, carry targeted mutations of the SUF39HMTases and the SUF420 HMTases, basically which mediate uh, histone 39, histone 3 lysine 9 trimethylation and histone 4 lysine 20 trimethylation were shown to, to basically to be essential to compact uh, telomeric repeats into a highly uh, heterochromatic structure. And this structure is then also further characterized by a high density of HP1, which directly binds to these histone modifications. And in addition, we find that subtelomeres are a high density of DNA methylation. We do not find uh, DNA methylation at telomeric repeats simply by the fact as uh, these sequences like uh, CPG, no? so there cannot be a substrate for our DNMTs. However, uh, in general, basically, if you knock out uh, these uh, heterochromatizing activities like DNMTs and the histone methyl transferases, what you see is a dramatic elongation of telomeres, which is then uh, uh, which is driven by uh, uh, increased uh, telomeric recombination. However, then basically when you look at cells uh, which progressively shorter telomeres, it, we basically were able to demonstrate uh, that this highly compact heterochromatin structure is opened and acquires a more active chromatin structure. Basically, you, uh, during, basically, when you, basically when you have short telomeres, you, have, you find a low density of these uh, repressive histone modifications, but you find increased active uh, histone modifications like the acetylation of histone H3 and histone H4. And uh, this opening of, 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 of the telomeric heterochromatin structure is then also uh, uh, paralleled by an increased uh, 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 recombination of telomeric sister chromatids. And these uh, uh, recombinations are, are aimed toward the, the uh, rescue of telomere length. So basically, and the model that we are proposing, <coughs> or that we have been proposing uh, in these uh, a couple of works is that basically uh, telomeric chromatin structure is important to control telomere length. And uh, we also would like to propose that uh, in the case of a highly compact telomeric heterochromatin, it would also be uh, more difficult for telomeres to enter the chromosome end and to, uh, to resynthesize or to re rejuvenate telomeres. However, functional evidence for this uh, is still missing. And this is also a project that I would like to envision for the future, like to generate a model system where we can control specifically the chromatin status of telomeres and then look at the, uh, the efficiency of tel telomerase in elongating these chromosomes. <coughs> so basically, uh, 
in the last 10 years, the, the study of, of chromatin regulation has received a real boost. And also recently, uh, the involvement of uh, long non-coding non RNAs uh, was highly linked uh, in, was with, with the control of, of heterochromatin and uh, chromatin regulation. And uh, in general, uh, what it was very interesting to observe in the last uh, genome projects is that basically, uh, basically the, the amount of, of protein coding genes uh, continues, so basically the percentage of, of the genetic information which is encoding protein, encoding genes, is uh, gradually uh, rapidly decreasing during evolution, as shown here by this uh, red bar. So basically, uh, Homo sapiens is just in containing a, a few percent of genetic, genetic information that is coding, encoding <coughs> proteins. But in the parallels, basically in, in parallel to the increase of uh, com biological complexity, we uh, observe like a, a, rapid, a rapid increase in sequences that, do, that basically are transcribed, however, are never translated. And uh, such non-coding RNAs have been recently in, have been demonstrated to be critically involved in, in, in chromatin regulation, like in X inactivation, where the non-coding RNA exists, is controlling uh, basically the heterochromatinization of an entire uh, chromosome. And on the other hand, in Drosophila, it was also shown that uh, ROX RNAs can, uh, also, can also control uh, the, 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 the expression of an entire chromosome. So this led to the proposition that basically non-coding RNAs can control uh, uh, telomer regulation, uh, can control chromatin regulation. And we were interested in, like, in, 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 uh, in testing whether we can also find uh, a non-coding RNA that contains telomeric repeats. And the start of, of these experiments was very simple. So basically I've done a, a northern plot using RNA from, from embryos, from mouse embryos and from adult tissues. And this uh, RNA was then probed with uh, telomere specific probes. So basically one probe was, was specific for CCC TAA and the other probe was specific for UUA GGG. And what we find is that basically uh, uh, using, a, telom, uh, using uh, 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 a probe that is uh, specific for this sequence, we were able to detect an uh, abundant uh, amount of, of transcript that contains telomeric UUA GGG repeats. In contrast to this, the antisense probe uh, did not show any signals or very weak. And the second uh, important finding was that basically the RNA that we have detected here is present in adult tissues, but it's not present in the embryo. So providing already an eventual link to processes like uh, organismal aging. So this very simple uh, experiment was then leading to a, a, a simple model also, uh, basically which says that there must exist an RNA polymerase but that basically uses uh, the telomeric C strand as a template to read towards the chromosome end to produce a long uh, single-stranded non-coding RNA that, that contains telomeric repeats. And uh, the size range of this uh, RNA is between like 500 or 200 nucleotides and uh, 9 KBs. So this also indicates that basically the, uh, considering like, uh, that we also find these, uh, these lengths of, of telomeric transcripts in human cells which have shorter telomeres already indicates that the promoter of such RNAs must be located in the subtelomeric regions of, of, of telomeres. <coughs> we were then interested also to use an independent method to, uh, to verify the existence of these RNAs, and this was an RNA fish experiment. So basically, you, we have generated uh, a, a fluorescently labeled probe that detects these telomeric transcripts, which then were called Terra. And we, and we, can, we were able to observe a punctuate pattern in the nucleus of these cells which perfectly co-localizes with TRF1, which is a, basically, a, as I already mentioned before, a protein which is specifically localizing to telomeres. So from this experience, we were then concluding that a telomeres is indeed localized at, 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 at telomeres. We also want to propose that this uh, RNA is localizing in cis to chromosome ends, and this identifies tera, tera basically as a, a new structural component of mammalian telomeres. We then went on to better characterize this RNA, and so basically we found uh, that these RNAs are highly enriched in the nucleus, so this indicates that this is a nuclear RNA. And uh, we also identified uh, that RNA polymerase 2 is the enzymatic, uh, uh, is, the, pro is the, the polymerase which is producing these non-coding RNAs, because when we treat cells with alpha amanitine for a couple of hours, we can efficiently reduce the expression of Terra whereas uh, the 20S ribosomal subunit, which is transcribed by RNA polymerase 1, uh, remains constant. 
And moreover, we were able to we were able to show in uh, in chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments that RNA polymerase two is localized uh, to telomeric repeats in a panel of, of human and mouse cell lines. So basically, this uh, identifies that RNA polymerase two is the enzymatic activity that is controlling the expression of of of, of, of Terra. So the model that is coming up here is that basically polymerase two can is able to walk through this highly contents heterochromatic regions and is walking towards the chromosome and producing this long local non-coding RNA, then which is then localized to telomeric uh, heterochromatin. <coughs> However, an important question is of course now what is the function of this RNA? Is this just produced by chance or as a kind of a noise RNA or can these RNAs really have a function in the control of, of telomeres? And one model that uh, came up immediately is a link between Terra and the control of, of telomerase activity. So as already mentioned previously, so the uh, telomerase is consisting of a protein component, TERT, which is the reverse transcriptase, and an RNA component, uh, which is called TERC, that basically contains the template that uses uh, TERT to, to, to exert its uh, reverse transcriptase uh, activity. <coughs> and then looking at the sequence of Terra, we found that uh, the UUA GGG repeats of Terra would basically perfectly base Paris with this temperate region of, of telomerase. And we, we were pro proposing that this idea that basically the formation of, of, uh, of these double stranded uh, RNA regions would then block the activity of telomerase. And as the testing such a model is very difficult in vivo, we just started off uh, in vitro. Uh, where we basically used a standard uh, assay, an enzymatic assay, to detect telomerase activity. So this assay, in this assay, you use a protein extract and then you, you add this uh, extract to a, a telomeric substrate, which is basically simply a, 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 a DNA oligonucleotide that has the, the three prime overhand sequence of telomeres. And then uh, this uh, oligo is uh, radioactively labeled, as you can see here. So you can see on the plot, but then uh, telomerase activity present in the extract would then elongate this uh, substrate, which is then uh, resulting in the formation of this uh, uh, letter structure. And importantly, when we add Terra to this enzymatic reaction, we can efficiently uh, abolish the activity of telomerase activity. However, in the contrast, when we add the antisense Terra RNA to the reaction, uh, telomerase activity is still uh, <coughs> high and nicely detectable. So from these uh, results, we were proposing the idea that basically, indeed, uh, Terra can inhibit telomerase activity. Uh, and we would propose the idea that basically this is happening directly at the chromosome end. So I also want to add here that this uh, experiment was also reproduced by other groups in using uh, other uh, human cells, but also in yeast. So this seems to be a kind of a conserved mechanism. Importantly, another group, basically the group of Joachim Lingner from, the, in Lo, from Lausanne, were also demonstrating that uh, Terra can be immunoprecipitated uh, using antibodies uh, that target a MIGTEC, a MIGTEC uh, basically telomerase, or basically they have done a PCR on these immunoprecipitates, they can detect MIG. And they also, identified, they also used the control uh, HNRPA1, which was uh, shown to be associated with telomerase. So basically, now the idea is that basically Terra can also be detected in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the telomerase complex. However, of course, we have to add here uh, that this is a kind of overexpression situation, but this is the status that is now published so far in the literature. <coughs> More importantly, or highly interesting, is basically the, the, the expression of Terra during the cell cycle. So basically, we see a peak of, of uh, expression of Terra in G1 and G2. However, when cells enter into S phase, these uh, Terra levels uh, decrease rapidly and reach their lowest levels at the end of the S phase. And this is exactly the time where telomerase, activity, where ter telomerase is working. So basically, telomerase activity, where telomerase is elongating chromosome ends directly at the end of S2, at, uh, at the end of the S phase, where we have lowest level of uh, Terra. This also would fit like to the model that Terra can control telomerase activity. So the current model that links uh, Terra to telomerase regulation is the following. So basically, uh, basically we see high Terra levels during the cell cycle. Uh, however, when we then reach into S phase, uh, uh, Terra levels rapidly decrease. And this is then basically giving uh, the opportunity of 
telomere of uh, this giving the opportunity to telomerase to be active and to elongate telomeres whereas in the rest of the cell cycle Tera is efficiently oh, Tera is in, in, has a role in controlling the activity of, of, of terabase activity by turning off uh, the activity of this complex. <coughs> so basically then we're also doing some initial experiments basically to link a possible control of telomerase activity by Terra to human cancer because our idea was that basically human cancer would not have a high interest in, uh, in expressing a lot of these non-coding RNAs as they wish to have efficient telomerase <coughs> activity to maintain telomeres at sufficient length. And as a first uh, experiment, what we were performing is like we were just taking some human cancer patients, uh, we were choosing different tumor types, so I just show three tumor types here out of a panel of 10 tumors. And what we find in general is that basically normal uh, tissue from the patient expresses high Terra levels, as shown here. So this we also know from the mouse, so basically in adult mouse, Terra levels are very high. However, when we isolate RNA from, from the tumor of these patients, we can see that uh, the RNA, the Terra RNA levels are rapidly decreased or efficiently reduced. And uh, basically when we uh, look at, at, at a low grade tumor, we can still nicely detect uh, uh, Terra. However, when we then look at a high grade uh, tumor sample, which contains a lot of uh, tumor uh, cells, cancer cells, Terra levels are even further reduced. And basically, so this uh, raises the interesting possibilities that a Terra could be used uh, or molecules that, uh, that recapitulate the function of Terra could be eventually used as a potential telomerase inhibitors or that we can also use eventually a Terra as a kind of diagnostic markers. And uh, basically we're also patenting uh, this idea. And one project that we have initiated now in, the, uh, in Rome is like to use a large panel of, of human breast cancer samples which are very well characterized for, uh, for the p53 status and um, all the receptor status of these cells and to study uh, the expression of this uh, uh, of Terra in these cancer samples and correlate uh, the Terra levels to telomere length and also other features of, of, of telomeres basically to provide further evidence that uh, Terra could be an important or interesting compound or target uh, for cancer diagnosis and uh, cancer therapy So now, in the recent year, basically, uh, or the recent one or two years, uh, people are then, uh, we are the Terra community, which consists of approximately three or four groups, have been, uh, then, of course, highly interested in better understanding the mechanism of, of Terra function. And uh, the first projects that have been started is basically to, to gain information into Terra function by uh, studying proteins that bind to Terra. And see. No, no, this is... Uh, and the second question is that if you can form the heteronuclex with the RNA components of the telomerase when the proteins are not there, when the third component is not there. <coughs> so you said that ah, okay, the RNA the of the third <coughs> um, is present in the cells even when the telomerase proteins are not it's there. It's not there, yeah. So I'm wondering whether that RNA can do something to the cell and whether it can be blocked by the Terra component that is present when Yeah, that's a good question. That's a very good question. So basically, you're basically asking whether, we can, whether this uh, interaction between uh, Terra and Terra can be yes, detected in telomerase negative the cells. RNA protein component and I was wondering whether an RNA-RNA interaction might have any function and whether anybody has checked whether the RNA uh, component of telomerase is present in the cells like in the bodies or some other subnuclear structure, cytoplasmic subnuclear structure where it can be Yeah, 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 yeah no, that's good, that's a very good, I mean. yeah, no, that's a very good point. So, uh, basically, we, so basically so far what is published is the, so far, basically regarding the localization of Terra, so far people are only part, or we have, all the groups are publishing that telomere, Terra is just localized at telomeres. But see, telomeres, for instance, can also be localized to PML bodies, which are important structures, the subnuclear structures. And basically, we have some, so I have done some experiments which also support the idea that basically we see some, uh, basically we see 
Terra, uh, we have evidence that Terra can also be localized to, to PML bodies. But uh, one has to be careful because uh, we, telomeres make a lot of things in PML bodies. So basically, they do a lot of DNA, replic uh, DNA recombination. There are some, I'm not completely sure what we are seeing there, but I think that yeah, could be a very interesting line of research here. And so regarding uh, the interaction of uh, TERC, uh, so basically the RNA component of telomerase and TERT, basically in a, uh, in, in a setting where we do not have telomerase, so this nobody has studied so far. But see, because everybody wants to have like a setup where we have telomerase activity. But it's a, actually a good idea like to look, basically to, to, to use a telomerase deficient model to demonstrate the interaction between these RNA molecules. Yeah. So basically now, uh, uh, current research is like focusing on, on basically identifying proteins that, lo that can bind to Terra. And basically two works have been published so far. Basically we are also carrying out a project in parallel. So basically, uh, basically the, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of my ex co-workers uh, in the Blasco lab, basically they were, uh, was publishing that a Terra can efficiently interact with a series of uh, HNRMP proteins and uh, basically what they demonstrated is that interfering with the expression of these uh, of, of HNRMP proteins, so this classic HNRMPA, AFM proteins, is then uh, causing an alteration in the metabolism of Terra. So basically, if you knock down HNRPF, you can see a dramatic increase in Terra expression. They also link this to a shorter telomere. Uh, and what importantly, what they find that uh, basically when you increase Terra, basically you can uh, see uh, a significant increase in telomeres that, that have uh, recruited uh, DNA, da DNA damage uh, proteins. And this is also basically this would indicate that basically uh, uh, HNRPA proteins uh, have a role in controlling uh, HNR uh, Terra metabolism and that increased Terra levels cause telomere shortening and telomere dysfunction. And uh, another group uh, was recently publishing that uh, Terra can, uh, is basically binding to a complex array of proteins, or that a complex array of proteins is binding to Terra. And basically they uh, argue that uh, Terra can intact with TRF1 uh, uh, and other uh, telomere binding proteins, but also with the ORC, so the uh, regional uh, of, <coughs> of replication complex, which is basically firing uh, DNA replication. And uh, the most important information from this paper is coming from a knockdown experiments of Terra. So basically they have managed to, to knock down Terra expression, which is uh, quite tricky. And they were able to demonstrate that if you reduce uh, the amounts of Terra in the cells, uh, you see a reduction in the uh, abundance of uh, repressive histone modifications, indicating that that Terra could have a role in the recruiting uh, of telomeric heterochromatin. And this would be also like in accordance to the uh, hallmark function in, of non-coding RNAs in heterochromatin regulation. So basically uh, from this work, basically uh, summarizing this published work, uh, basically indicates that basically polymerase two is uh, 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 transcribing telomeres and producing a long non-coding RNAs that controls uh, the replication of telomeres but uh, basically this work was missing quite some functional experiments and it's also recruiting uh, he uh, epigenetic regulators. So the expression of these RNAs is uh, developmentally regulated. So that gives like a link to organismal aging. In particular, if you, uh, if you basically consider, that, consider a role of, of, of Terra in the control of telomerase activity. And basically this proposes an important role of Terra in chromatin regulation, cancer development, but also organismal aging. This is also something that we want to study, uh, that we have to, uh, initiated to study in the lab. So basically, um, to get like an insight, uh, basically we, were, we were then decided to choose a cell model system which can then be used like to study, uh, to, can be studied in the context of, 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 of development, like differentiation, or in the context and, and cancer. And the nice model system uh, is like uh, mouse embryonic stem cells that basically enable us to do these both things. So basically, mouse embryonic stem cells are pretty potent when you uh, uh, let them grow in the presence of, uh, of a growth factor, which is called LIF. And basically, so these cells are pretty potent. They form, uh, uh, can form a new mouse if you inject them into a blastocyst. 
However, if you inject them uh, into the, uh, subcutaneously into the mouse, these cells are form carcinomas. So, so like well, naively one can say that these uh, cells can all reflect also like a cancer model. However, on the other hand, uh, basically if you uh, let these um, uh, cells differentiate in the absence of leaf, so these uh, mouse embryonic uh, stem cells acquire uh, specific differentiation markers and they lose the pluripotency. So they, they go on, so basically they undergo differentiation, which is also like a model system like for organismal aging. So this is what we want to, what we have proposed. And we wanted to, we have also done some experiments too, basically that to, to show that this um, uh, tool models could be, could work in, in uh, real. So basically, first of all, we looked in, uh, undif so basically we looked at Terra levels in undifferentiated and in differentiated ES cells. And we find that when we induce Terra expression, uh, basically when we, when we differentiate uh, mouse embryonic stem cells, we see an efficient increase in the expression of Terra. Something that we also see uh, in, in vivo, no? because in embryos they do not express Terra. However, in the adult tissue, we, we see a uh, high Terra expression. So when we differentiate this, uh, uh, when we differentiate the um, mouse cells for 10 days, we can see like an efficient uh, reduction in telomere length. So basically, the like telomeres shorten approximately uh, one, 800 base pairs of uh, one KB per day, so which is very quick and very fast. And what we also, what has already been, been published previously is that basically when you induce uh, differentiation in mouse ES cells, you rapidly reduce telomerase activity. Also something that we, that we see in, in development. And in, in line with this, we also see that uh, uh, heterochromatin is, efficient, is efficiently compacted when you differentiate mouse ES cells. So from this, uh, uh, basically, so this is like providing evidence for us that these uh, pluripotent mouse ES cells can be really nice for our systems to study Terra function in the control of differentiation, aging, and cancer. So basically, we've initiated the project uh, where we were also interested in, in studying uh, uh, proteins that bind to Terra. And so basically, we're starting off with an educated guess because uh, the literature, so there exists a protein which is called uh, Vigilin, which contains uh, 15 RNA binding, contain, uh, 15 RNA binding uh, domains. So it's a very huge protein that's highly conserved uh, between uh, Drosophila and humans. And in, in Drosophila polyten chromosomes, this protein was uh, shown to perfectly co-localize to HP1, which is like uh, which, uh, protein which we can also find at at uh, human uh, mammalian telomeres. And importantly, recently it was also shown that vitrin directly interacts with 239H1, which is the enzymatic activity that recruits uh, H3K9 trimethylation to uh, telomeric heterochromatin. So basically we were then uh, doing a simple pull-down experiments where you are using biotinylated uh, telomeric repeats. So basically it's this, this sequence here, UUA, GGG repeats, and uh, basically mutated telomeric repeats, telomeric RNA repeats, and we sh can uh, show that basically Vigilin is indeed uh, interacting uh, preferentially with UUA GGG repeats, but not with this mutant uh, RNA. So this is basically a Western plot of these pull-down experiments. We then were then, of course, searching evidence to localize Vigilin to chromosome ends. So we were doing uh, uh, chip experiments in uh, immortalized MEFs, C2, C12 cells, and in HeLa cells. And in all these cells, we can find that uh, Vigilin, uh, basically using sp antibodies again, using different, three different serum against uh, Vigilin, we can find that Vigilin can be detected at chromosome ends. This identifies Vigilin as a new RNA binding protein at telomeres. That, according to this in vivo evidence, uh, can also interact with telomeric uh, RNA, so with Terra. We were then uh, taking advantage of mouse, embry mouse embryonic stem cells that are available, and that could also give us now the model system to study a possible terra vigilin interaction in like cancer and also differentiation and aging. So basically these are mouse yes cells, are alpha vigilin, so they do not express the protein. We show this by Western and also by immunofluorescence. And however, what, what, we find, what we found is very interesting is that basically in these cells, um, telomeres are dramatically reduced. So basically we see a 20% telomere shortening between wild type, between the parental cells, no? the J136 cells, and uh, the Vigilin null cells, basically which were derived from these two cells here, these two cell lines. 
So this indicates that uh, in undifferentiated ES cells, uh, vitrin untag can antagonize um, uh, telomere length, uh, the elongation of telomeres. So we are then uh, testing the possibility there that this could be regulated on the level of telomerase regulation. However, so far we have not received any convincing uh, evidence that basically vitrin could be involved in the control of telomerase activity. So be because telomerase activity between wild time and vitrin in large cells is more or less the same. So there's no significant uh, difference. However, when we then performed um, uh, chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments, we were then able to show that uh, these Vigilin null ES cells shown in gray uh, show a significant increase in repressive histone modifications like H3K9 trimethylation, uh, HP1, H4K20 trimethylation, which are basically repressive histone modifications at telomeres. And uh, basically, we already know that basically an increase in, this, in the abundance of these repressive uh, histone modifications is reducing the ability of telomeres to recombine with each other. So you have more, uh, you have more heterochromatin at telomeres, that's why telomeres cannot uh, recombine efficiently. And the, so basically to, to, to also show this in the cell model system, we have used uh, uh, telomere cofish. So basically in this method, basically you can specifically detect uh, telomeres at the leading and the leading strand. And this gives you basically a, a DNA fish uh, signal of the P arm and of the, of the Q arm. However, when you then perform basically a successive hybridizations of basically a leading strand uh, DNA fish probe with a lagging strand DNA fish probe, you see this uh, nice uh, staining. Basically, you see a uh, red and the green signals for the P and the Q arm. However, if then um, a recombination event is occurring, you see an overlap of these, um, of these uh, two signals. So this is like basically telling you that this two uh, telomeric sister chromatids have undergone telomere recombination. And uh, basically, if you compare the frequency of these recombination events, we can show that basically uh, telomeric sister chromatid <coughs> exchange is significantly reduced in virtually null mouse embryonic stem cells. And basically, basically and as the recombination of, of telomeres is, an, uh, is a basically, 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 so the, so the basically mouse ES cells, we see a quite abundant uh, recombination because in general, the heterochromatin of mouse ES cells is quite open. And so, there's the, so the, we think that basically the recombination between telomeres plays a quite important role in the uh, maintenance or the control of telomere length in mouse ES cells. So basically, but if you increase uh, heterochromatinization, basically you reduce the efficiency of this pathway, which is then causing uh, the loss of the, uh, the reduction in telomere length. We then were, as we were then um, were interested in testing a possible interaction between Vigilin and, uh, and, and, and Terra metabolism because previous groups have shown that if you alter HNRPs, you see also a, a different amount of Terra in the cells. So we've done a very simple experiments. So we, we have uh, looked at um, or simply terra levels in our model cell lines. However, we do not see a difference in undifferentiated, uh, basically in, in absolute terra uh, levels in um, uh, undifferentiated mouse ES cells. Uh, when we induce differentiation uh, in the wild type ES cells, we see, uh, as already mentioned previously, an efficient increase in terra expression. However, in the absence of vigilant, these RNA levels remain the same. And importantly, also the stability of terra is not uh, significantly altered between uh, vitrin null and wild type ES cells. So from these uh, results, we would like to propose that uh, vitrin uh, does not control uh, Terra metabolism, but it could rather be that uh, Terra recruits vitrin and vitrin is, 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 is recruiting other proteins uh, to chromosome ends and to control telomeric heterochromatin. And so to, so basically, as I've already shown here, Terra levels are, incre are increasing in mouse embryonic stem cell differentiations compared to undifferentiated ES cells. So we were interested in testing whether this increase, uh, Vigilin, whether Vigilin could have a role uh, in the recruitment of telomeric heterochromatin in differentiation conditions. So basically, these are our experiments that I've mentioned previously. So if you differentiate, differentiate ES cells, you can see as here uh, an increase in uh, 
HP1 and H4K20 trimethylation, which indicates that, telomer, uh, that heterochromatin is recruited to telomeres. However, when you differentiate vigilin nullius cells, as shown here by these white bars, the recruitment of this heterochromatin is, uh, is completely impaired. So basically, uh, vigilin nullius different, differentiating vigilin nullius cells are unable to, to recruit telomeric heterochromatin <coughs> to chromosome ends. And so basically, we, see, we, can observe a, we can observe a defect in heterochromatinization at telomeric repeats. But we were then also interested in testing uh, chromatin features at subtelomeres, and we decided to look into DNA methylation at subtelomeric repeats. So basically, subtelomeric repeats are basically these uh, are long sequence stretches that are located adjacent to telomeric repeats. And these uh, subtelomeric repeats are also highly repeat rich, but they, they can also compare, they can also contain uh, imperfect telomeric repeats, also some telomeric repeats. So it's a very heterogeneous uh, uh, sequence. These are very heterogeneous sequences that are not very well understood. However, what, what we know is that subtelomeric re, uh, repeats are highly increased in DNA methylation. And if we look at uh, vigilin cells in differentiation, we can see that uh, the amount of, of, of DNA methylation is significantly reduced. So basically, this identifies vigilin as a kind of uh, protein that is important to recruit uh, telomeric het heterochromatin during um, our embryonic stem cell differentiation. And uh, adapting our differentiation model system in vitro to aging, we would also like to propose that vigilin could be important like in controlling the telomeric chromatin structures during embryo development and during organismal aging. We were then also interested in uh, seeing whether these um, uh, defects in heterochromatinization in vigilin null ES cells uh, also reflect on telomere length. And that's why we performed a uh, simple DNA fish experiment where we hybridized a telomere probe to chromosome ends. And each of these uh, dots here is like reflecting, uh, is like showing the intensity of telomere fluorescence of, 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 of particular chromosomes. And altogether, this gives a kind of distribution of telomere length. And uh, as expected, basically, when we differentiate uh, the parental cell lines, for instance, J1, under conditions with retinic acid, we see uh, this uh, nice reduction of, of telomere length within 10 days. So we see the same in the other control cell lines, 36. Also here we see a reduction. However, importantly, when we differentiate uh, um, uh, vitreal embryonic stem cells, we do not see this uh, dif uh, reduction in telomere length. In contrast, we see an increase in telomere length regulation. So this is basically uh, the current status of the research that we are, have done on, on, the, on the interaction between Vigilin and Terra. And this uh, model, so this result is like basically highly stimulating for us because we think that basically uh, due to the loss of heterochromatization in uh, differentiated Vigilin null ES cells, uh, we could uh, see uh, improved uh, telomere elongation, which could be uh, mediated by uh, basically the uh, uh, by an increased telomere recombination. This is basically one of the experiments that we would like to initiate in the, in the next one or two weeks. Basically, he would like to, he would expect that basically these telomeres are shown increased recombination between uh, telomeric sister chromatids. And then of course, we also have to further validate uh, 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 telom uh, telomerase activity in these cells to exclude that basically Vigilin could somehow be important for telomer telomerase regulation in uh, ESL differentiation. So basically the current model that we uh, want to propose is, uh, basically we would like to propose a role for Vigilin in the recruitment of telomer hect telomeric heterochromatin to, uh, to chromosome ends. So basically in pluripotent uh, mouse ES cells, we have a rather open chromatin stru structure at chromosome ends and uh, Terra is expressed, but not at very high levels. However, then when we induce differentiation by using retinic acid, we efficiently um, uh, can increase Terra levels. And we would like to propose the idea, of course, it's very preliminary, that Vigilin is recruited by, uh, by Terra to chromosome end, and it's bringing along heterochromatinizing uh, proteins like SUF39H1 or SUF420H1. Uh, and uh, this recruitment of this heterochromatinizing activities then driving a compaction of telomeric chromatin, 
And we think that this can be also important when seeing these differences in telomere length between vigilant null and wild type ES cells. Uh, we see that we would propose that this could have an important role in controlling telomere length uh, between uh, young cells, like undifferentiated cells, and old aging cells. So basically, we would like to propose that vigilant could play a role in, uh, in the aging of telomeres during uh, organogenesis or ontogenesis. So basically, uh, these are our very preliminary results that we have so far, and we are already very excited and like to continue on this in this project to see like new developments coming up here. So basically, at the end of my presentation, I would like to thank the people involved. So basically, these are all uh, people that have been recruited in the last uh, uh, three or four months. So basically, Roberto just started in January, Eleonora also in January, and uh, Carmen Vico will join us uh, basically tomorrow. And uh, for the projects that we have, for which, uh, so I also want to thank the funding agencies, which is the Fondazione Veronese, and I also received the IX Startup Grant uh, recently. And also we, I get some report from the uh, Regina Elena Scientific Director. And I also want to thank the collaborators that are so far collaborating with me, which is Giovanni Blandino. So basically he's providing these uh, cancer samples that we want to study for Terra. Then another collaboration we have with Ruben Agami from the NKI. In this project, we uh, want to identify microRNAs uh, that control the expression of telomere regulators. So this is a screening project that Roberto is doing now, but you know, the results are still not uh, nice enough to show. And uh, we are also doing a collaboration with the La Sapienza with uh, Maria Salvino to look better into the structure of, 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 of Terra molecules. So this I want to stop my presentation and I invite you to ask questions. <laughs>